Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Super Mario Yoshi figure. This guy just came out. People are pretty excited about Yoshi being part of the line, and despite some uh, relatively disappointing problems in some of the past figures like Mario and Luigi, People were excited for Yoshi, myself included, and I have to say, he turned out pretty good. There are some issues that, of course, I will point out. That's the whole point of this review, after all, but I'm pretty happy with it overall. So, let's take a look at the package real quick, just because a lot of you guys ask me about the packaging for this kind of figure. Standard window box, just like all the other SH Figure Arts Marios. You can see Mario on Yoshi right there, Yoshi on the side, and then some posing options on the back. Nice colorful packaging, so if you do want to display it in the package, you can do that. Uh, this is a first edition Yoshi, so to speak, in that if you got him in the first batch, you got, at least if you ordered through Japan, I believe. Uh, actually, I think the uh, the uh, Bluefin distributed ones will probably have these two if they're in the first batch. Not 100% sure, but anyway. You get the one up little bonus thing and as you can kind of see right there you get some stuff and I'll show you what you get. First of all you get the one up mushroom which is the green and white mushroom. Very similar to the red and white one that came with Mario. Slightly different color down here and of course we have green instead of red. Uh, the white spots they could be a little bit whiter. Uh, they probably are showing up as super white on camera right now but you can almost see through them. It's not a huge deal but it's kind of noticeable in person. So it's a nice little bonus accessory. In addition to this, and this is what I really like, you get the one-up text that would pop up, and it's sculpted so that the green is uh, embossed above the black, and it's two-way. I'm not sure why it's like that. It's still kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, it looks really nice. It's a nice little bonus piece, and then you also get these little clips that are for Mario and Luigi. Luigi's the smaller one, Mario's the bigger one. And this just pegs in right here, and then that goes on their fists. I'll show you real quick how that works, even though I'll probably show you in the photos at the end. You want to just put it on Mario's hand, on the top part of the hand. Let's see if I can do this on camera. And then slide it in along the finger groove so that there's very little risk of breaking this clear plastic. Because you guys know clear plastic right like this is pretty fragile. So that just snaps on like that, and then you put the one up on there, and it looks like it says one up, and it's a nice cool little bonus. And then same thing for Luigi. I'll just show you that in the uh, photos at the end probably. Well, I'll show you now. What the heck. So here's Luigi, and same thing. Put it in the top part of his hand, slide it up through that bottom finger crease, and it should kind of snap into place and then you can put the one up there. Unfortunately, you do only get the one one up, so you can't give them both one unless you bought two Yoshis and want to split it up. But still, a nice bonus. I'm really happy that they made that, so it's pretty cool. All right, for Yoshi, we already looked at the packaging. Let's look at the figure. We'll do accessories after we go through the entire figure. So he stands roughly about four and a half inches tall. And I know what a lot of you are wondering, what's he look like compared to the Jax Yoshi? They are almost identical in size and shape. Of course, there are some few differences here and there in, this, in the sculpt and shape and, of course, articulation. But they are about as close as two dissimilar figures can get. One being a super cheap, basically a kid's toy. It's, what, $7, I think, when it came out? Awesome figure for 7 bucks, and this one was, what, 35 something like that. They are almost identical, other than, obviously, the finish, as you might want to call it. So, uh, watch the review and decide if you want to get the Yoshi or not. I'll just review him on it as a standalone figure. I'm just saying, it's really close to the same thing. Obviously this guy's lacking articulation and bonus features and finish for the paint and everything, but that's what they look like side by side. Almost identical in the general category. And then of course we have to talk about the egg, but we'll talk about the egg later. So let's look at Yoshi overall. How's he look? Well the greens are all fairly uniform. Everything looks pretty good as far as that goes. I don't believe any of the green is painted. It all seems to be molded green. So that's a good thing. It's easy to keep continuity in the greens. As far as the whites go, those look like a mix of molding and paintwork. And it's okay. I believe the mouth is molded in white. I forgot to look when I took it apart, but yeah, I'm pretty sure the mouth is molded in white. 
The cheeks and the stomach are both painted. They're painted pretty well. There's no translucent, uh, translucentness, translucence uh, for it. So there's no green peeking through. So that's good. Most of the line work is pretty clean. You can see it's a little fuzzy in the very, very edge in some places, but it's not super noticeable. So that's okay. So the whites are good. Oranges, I don't know if they're painted or molded. I would guess that they are, that this one's molded and these two are painted if I had to guess, but they are uniform also. The red looks good, the white looks good on the shell. The eyes are glossy and the paintwork on the eyes, well here I'll show you one of the accessories. He's got alternate eyes. He comes with these actually in the package, but I swapped them out for the review. So you can swap those out and I'll just use these to show you how awesome the eyes look. The white is glossy and then the detail in them it doesn't look as pixelated in person that's just because we're zoomed in super tight but they look really good they're really clean and they have a nice look to them so i'm really happy about that now let's look at the boots i don't know if this is a common thing i didn't notice it anywhere else and i didn't notice it on mine until right now hopefully you can see on the video they are entirely different shades of orange that's one orange that's another if that's not a common issue then i got hosed and that's a big problem if that is a common issue then we all got hosed and it's a really big problem i hope you can see it it looks like you can in the uh, on the screen here this is kind of like a burnt sienna not quite but kind of like a brownish orange this one's almost like a pumpkin orange it's actually depends what kind of pumpkin i guess very different this one has much more oranginess and this one's a little more brown or tan i just noticed that and i'm so irritated that they have his two different color feet like, that is not an acceptable figure to sell if they're all like that. And even if mine's like that, it's not acceptable for even one of them to have different color feet. They should be molded. I guess maybe two different batches had different shades of orange plastic and I happened to get the split. I don't know, but that's really, really bad. Anyway, wow, that's disappointing. Really disappointing. Let's look at the articulation. So, as you might have guessed, the head doesn't have the greatest range of motion. He's got pretty big head no neck really so we do get the swivel of course that's nice we can lean the head back and the cool thing is you can kind of pull the head up a little bit and when you lean it back this back fin thing tucks in so that's kind of a nice feature and you can also pull the shell back like this it has a hinge on it i'll go into that in a little more detail later you can pull the shell back a little bit so that you can lean his head back even farther and that's so that you can use this other accessory which is his interchangeable tongue for doing the thing that Yoshi does where he eats stuff. We'll talk about that when we get into the accessories. So the head goes really far back, almost no forward at all. So that's a little disappointing because you kind of have to lean him forward in order for his eyes to see over his nose. But it's not a huge problem, it just doesn't go super far forward. The mouth is kind of just a fixed piece. You'll see when we take it apart for the tongue interchanging. But, you know, I think that's a decent amount of movement for the head. It's far beyond Mario's range of motion, so that's okay. Uh, we'll talk about the eyes when we go through the accessories. The shell we'll talk about when we go through the accessories. I'll leave it off for now. The arms, the shoulders. We have a ball hinge that swivels in the torso, so you can see that moving around there. And if we get the hinge in it, but it's still really limited. We get maybe, what is that, 40 degrees difference in the range of motion and that's it there's no swivel in the bottom half of that ball hinge it only swivels in the torso so you're fixed up here at the shoulder other than the hinge same thing for the elbow we get the elbow hinge it's not bad i think it's probably good enough for yoshi i do wish it had more but that's it there's no swivel at either end even though it looks like a standard figure arts ball hinge it's a fixed ball hinge it's really just a hinge that looks like a ball hinge so that's all you get and then for the wrist, I'll show you that up close. It looks like a standard figure arts ball hinge, right? Wrong. It's just a hinge. There's no rotation in it. It's just a hinge with a peg on it for the interchangeable hands. So we do get the swivel here, but no, no swivel anywhere else. Why are they not using ball hinges when they could? And they could give us bicep and shoulder swivels and wrist swivels. There's really no reason for that other than they're trying to save money. Which, if you're marketing it as an SH Figure Arts figure, it should have those joints. If you don't want to put those joints in, which is fine, market it as something else, like SH Nintendarts or something. I don't know, I'm not the guy creating the names. But don't market it as an SH Figure Arts and then 
skip almost all of the articulation. Let's move on. We have the hips, which feel to me like just a standard, a fixed ball peg. It doesn't feel like you can move it around anyway, other than move the leg around that one fixed ball peg. That said, it seems to have a pretty good range of motion for being just a fixed ball peg with kind of a thick thigh or thick leg. Moves around pretty well. I'm okay with that. I don't think it looks too bad. The gaps aren't too big, so I'm pretty happy with that fixed ball peg. The only problem is, and I guess this is a common thing, I've seen some photos online, the uh, rim for the hip cutout, it's kind of a sharp joint, or sharp sculpt, I guess you could say, and almost all of the Yoshis come with marks on their legs, because the leg's like that, and it's pressed up against it in the package, so when you take it out, you get this glossy mark on the knee. It's not a huge deal for most people, probably not a deal at all, but it's something to note that this is sharp, and you should be careful while posing it, because you could even get some paint transfer on there. So be extra careful. Now on to the ankles. I'm not entirely sure if there's a single or a double. It feels just like a single ball peg. I can't get it to move in any directions other than the standard single ball peg, so that's what I'm going to go with. You get pretty decent side to side motion, so you shouldn't have too much trouble posing him. You can bring it a little bit back, but you can't go too far forward, and that's kind of curious. The reason is, they put that little tab in there, you can see that green tab sticking down. That's a stopper for the foot. I don't know why they didn't want us to use that articulation, but it keeps the foot from going too far forward. Maybe it's a balance thing, I don't know, but I do wish you could get better range of motion forward and back, especially since, like I said, Yoshi needs to lean forward at least a little bit so that his eyes aren't blocked by his nose. You don't want him to look like that in your display. So I, I'm, a little cu uh, I'm a little curious, I'm a little, I don't know, disappointed, I guess, that there's a stopper in there. Maybe there's a reason, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so let's talk about the accessories. We get our standard neon green grass, which has the interchangeable peg holes for the upright piece, which is just this little upright piece, two hinges. So you can swap those holes around and use that. So that's a nice piece. His peg hole, instead of being like in his tail or back here or something, it's right in the middle of his legs. Not sure why. That's going to make it a lot harder to pose him without it looking bad. And I don't mean it looks bad because he's got a peg coming out of there. I mean it looks bad because it's like right in the middle of his legs, so it's going to be hard to not make it look bad. You get what I'm saying? Anyway, the peg hole on mine, and maybe this isn't a common issue, I'm saying that a lot on this guy, the peg hole, not made right. I have to put the peg in at an angle, and then it barely pegs in all the way, so it's not, not done right. If I push it in straight, it can't even go in, it just falls right back out. So, QC, not great on this guy. So that's one of the accessories. We already talked about the eyes, so I'll do those next. To swap out the eyes, this part I do like. They did a really good job making this almost seamless. So you just pop the eyes off like that, and then you can pop the eyes out like that, swap them. It almost feels like Mr. Potato Head, and push it back down. Really well done. They did a good job with the eye swap. Looks like that orange paint is paint, in fact is in fact paint, like I thought it might be. Okay, so that's the interchangeable eyes, and that'll be good for using this accessory, which is his egg. Now, the problem with his egg, and I don't know why they did this again, since it's supposed to be an SH Figure Arts, the egg is connected to the hand. We get an alternate hand for both sides, but for the his left hand, the one on the right right now, the egg is connected to it. You can never put the egg in the other hand without breaking it. That's really disappointing. You can, of course, swap the hands out so that you can put the egg in his hand and use that one hinge, that fixed hinge, if you want to. Rotate that and use the hinge. And it looks cool. I like that they gave us the egg. That's awesome. It'll make for a nice pose. There's no reason that it has to be a fixed accessory. It should be interchangeable for either hand, a little peg on either side something it wouldn't have been hard for them to do that. So that's disappointing. It's not a huge deal, but again, it's a figure arts figure, so why do we have limitations like this when we don't need to? As far as the egg goes, it's flat white paint, just like his belly. The green's a little bit more vibrant, but it's also flat. And a weird thing about it, being an egg, uh, it's the, the spots on it are sculpted, and then the green doesn't go all the way to the spots, so that makes it stand out even more, and it just looks kind of weird. Here's the egg that came with the uh, Jax Yoshi. Now, it's a lot smaller, of course, 
but it's got a little bit of a gloss to it, which I think looks really good. Eggs tend to have a little bit of a finish on them. This might be accurate, but I think this looks pretty good because it breaks up against the figure. Instead of having like the exact same paint on both things, it looks nice to have a little bit of a finish on there. That's a personal preference. It's up to you if you like that or not. But they did do a better job since the green is more smoothly painted and it's not sculpted. So I, I don't know. Another issue, not a big one, but it is an issue nonetheless. So there's that accessory. Now let's talk about the tongue. For the tongue, you wanna to pull the head off, and that's how the joint is, by the way. Just get that little hinged peg that the head moves around on like that. So this moves around, we get a little filler piece back here. Bring that all the way back, and you can tip the mouth forward, and this should come out when you pull on the top of it. Like, use your fingernail and just pull that out it's not super tight, shouldn't have a problem. And now we can peg in this one, which has the tongue on it. And you'll feel how it has to go in. It shows you in the instructions also. So there he has his big tongue accessory, which I'll put on the body so you can see. It's fine. I don't know why it has a big seam going across the bottom. That's a little weird. It's really obvious. But I guess it's not a big deal since it's at least on the bottom. So then you have the tongue accessory and you can lean the head back like I showed you so that you can have him use that, which is cool. I mean, Yoshi's known for using his tongue, so I'm glad they included that. And it looks pretty good and it works pretty well. Very seamless around the mouth once you push it in all the way. So that's nice. All right, lastly, let's look at the shell. So you saw as we were doing the rest of the review that the main shell, which just looks like a normal shell, comes off, obviously. There's a hinge in here, like I showed you, so that you can bring the shell back, so you can lean the head all the way back. And then there's a little hinge right here, just so that you can seat the shell properly. We have a peg, that's how they swap out. We have one shell here for Mario? I'm not sure which is which offhand. I think Mario's is the skinny one, maybe. Either way, we get one shell for Mario and one shell for Luigi. They're slightly different shapes and they have different cups, if you want to call it a cup. So that just goes on his back like that. Doesn't sit super flush unless you bring it all the way forward, which would probably be better for them anyway. So there you have it. There's the clear acrylic for Mario or Luigi, whichever one you want to swap out. So there you have it. Um, so final thoughts, I guess. Uh, two different color boots, total problem. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. If you look at his neck, and it's not a huge deal because once you pose him, you're not going to notice it. I don't really see why they had to make that giant gap on either side of the mouth. When you open it, it's not a big problem. Actually, let's put the mouth back in there so you can see. Because this is something I wanted to talk to you guys about, if you're curious about this figure. So, when you open his mouth, it's not a huge deal because the mouth mostly hides that gap. Why they couldn't sculpt it in a way that hid the gap all the time, I don't know. It kind of gives him this Basset Hound look from certain angles with that gap in there. It's not a big deal again, because once you pose them, it'll disappear, but it is something worth mentioning in a review. The mouth does work well. I like that it tucks in around the nose and everything, but that gap is an issue. So, final thoughts. Two different colors of boots, not good at all. That's a huge eyesore, very big problem. Uh, lack of articulation in the elbow, wrist, and shoulder, not a good thing. The head articulation is pretty good. Ankles are okay, hips are okay. Uh, Paintwork overall, pretty good. Personally, I like gloss for the shell, but that's not an issue. I can't count that as a negative. Uh, as far as Mario and Luigi sitting on his back, I don't know how many people are actually going to do that. I think it looks a little weird. You'll see in the photos at the end and you can decide for yourself. I do recommend the figure overall, uh, assuming that his boots are the same color for everyone else. If they're not, then that shouldn't be acceptable and we shouldn't buy it because that's not acceptable. Otherwise, I recommend it. I mean... Despite its flaws, it's still a decent figure. I still hold that they should probably not call it a figure arts figure or figure arts. They should probably call it, like I said, something else, some kind of subset of figure arts. Since it is more minimalistic, just like this guy and just like Luigi, they don't have the full range of motion, which is what figure arts, that's literally what they're for. Articulation. And these guys just don't have it. So despite the flaws, I do still recommend it. 
just be weary or be wary of those things I pointed out. Stick around for the photos at the end here and check out Big Bed Toy Store. There's a link in the description. If you do decide to pick up Yoshi, you will be able to pre-order him at Big Bed Toy Store and he should be in stock very soon. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.